Hi friends, so today I thought, you know what? I love a good PowerPoint. I love when people break down marketing advice, finance advice, life, well, not life advice. I haven't seen one with life advice yet. And that is why I created this PowerPoint today. I really wanted a PowerPoint that just kind of explained how to get your life back on track. This is, you know, just as much for me as for anyone else. I go through ebbs and flows with life and when I feel like I got my shit together and when I feel like I haven't. I don't know what I'm gonna title this video. If you're looking at the PowerPoint slide right now, I titled it, How to Unf Your Life. <laughs> I don't know if that's a bit like extreme, but that's kind of how it feels sometimes when you're getting your like life back on track. So I really hope you guys enjoy this PowerPoint slide. Let's get right into it. So how to unf your life, a step-by-step -step guide. This is my guide for life transformation. And I think we go through this multiple times in life. I think of like the transformation I had since leaving university, the transformation I've had becoming a business owner, the transformation I've had trying to be, you know, in better shape in my life or just doing things better. So I have a little quote here that I feel like is really representative of just getting your life together is that a lot, what a lot of people don't realize is you're truly one to two years away from living the life that you dream about. And, you know, even if I look back one to two years ago, I can't believe where I'm at today. And, you know, the goals just keep getting bigger. So I really hope that you guys feel encouraged while going through this PowerPoint. As I say, welcome everyone class has commenced. So recently I've compiled various resources that I found when researching how other people like optimize their life success, happiness, and more. And through different articles, I thought it was really interesting to pull up these facts. And this is a question that I try to ask myself more lately, which is, are you living or are you just existing? Sometimes I feel like we put ourselves in survival mode and we're not really enjoying life. As I've mentioned in the statistics here, less than 20% of time is spent on activities people truly enjoy for most people. And approximately 90% is how long the average person spends their time regretting the past or worrying about the future instead of, you know, really enjoying the present. So do you feel like you are not getting anywhere? Are you feeling stagnant in your progress? Maybe you've created some bad habits that you're struggling to fix. But the good news is today is a new day. I know this sounds super cheesy, but today is also the first day of the rest of your life. Today you have the opportunity to become completely immersed in yourself and your goals. So if you're looking outside the window and it's morning or daylight where you are, I love looking at this in the morning and thinking this is a chance, this is a new day to change my habits, to become a better person. Um, it's a new day for a new opportunity. That truly is the most amazing part about life is that there is no rule that you need to be the same person you are today, tomorrow. And it's incredible that we get to wake up, you know, each day and play this game of life. So I really try to feel grateful in that way and don't, you know, dwell on embarrassing moments or moments of failure. If you fail, who cares? Tomorrow's a new day, you can try again. And I really think that is a helpful growth mindset to have when you're trying to work on yourself um, and reach your goals. You can always reinvent yourself, right? So the past does not equal the future. As I mentioned, you can wake up tomorrow and choose a change. I really like this quote by Tony Robbins, which is the biggest conflict that humans experience on a daily basis is the need to remain consistent with how they choose to identify themselves. That need to remain consistent is usually what forces people to stay stuck and how they've always been. So we almost feel like we have to match a pattern of how our life's been going, but really we can choose to change it all tomorrow, right? So understanding that your past does not equal your future is a huge part of the process of creating change in your life. So with all this in mind, let's break down what we can work on to make today and every day onwards the best we can. Okay, so <laughs> I talk a lot about like mindset with productivity and with running a business and just succeeding even in the workplace I think it's really important. Uh, I saw this, I think this was a TikTok that I saw that talked about these mind traps that you wanna identify and see which one you're falling into. And these mind traps are preventing you from living the life that you desire. So number one, we have the blame trap. So this is where we blame life and others. You know, we're always blaming our circumstances on other people or on life. There's two, the helpless trap. This is where we think we're victims of our circumstances. You know, everything happens to us. Number three is the catastrophe trap. I struggle to say that word, catastrophe. Catastrophe trap. <laughs> <laughs> where we exaggerate even the littlest of things and make them a major crisis. I have a tendency to do this sometimes. And then we have number four, the guilt trap, which I also would definitely put myself in, where we constantly have critical thoughts of ourselves. We never feel like we're doing enough. And number five, we have the all or nothing trap, where we overreact to humans or circumstances and believe that they are totally one way or the other. So these are some mind traps that we definitely all fall into at different points in our life. And what's really important about these mind traps is that by recognizing them, we can then correct how we feel, right? So you wanna understand where a lot 
lot of the negative or uncomfy feelings come from, why we think that way. And then we wanna track and keep note of what is making us feel this way. Uh, when we have these negative thoughts, we can remember to challenge them and understand that they're negative thoughts and reframe them. Then we can acknowledge what's good in our lives and move on. So I thought it was important to throw this part in the beginning, but yeah, I think that will help you in any circumstance in life is to make sure that you don't fall into these mind traps. Okay, so proving our lives, right? Let's talk about the basics. So to start, our habits really form who we are every day. What do we do every single day is really, I mean, it's helping us build skills or, you know, not helping us build skills, right? So you really want to talk about and think about all the bad habits in your life and what you think may need fixing, what you'd like to replace them with. So are you scrolling too much? Like, why does this happen? I love that term. What is it? Brain rot? Am I using that right from TikTok? Is that when you're just like scrolling a lot? Actually, I, you know, don't even ask me. Brain rot is just a word that I like to throw around. I don't really know what it means from TikTok. But anyways, you get into like the doom scrolling and everything. You're scrolling too much. Why do you think this is happening? Are you procrastinating? Are you just feeling like you're in a bit of a funk? Are you sleeping too late? Why do you think this is happening? And yeah, if you are procrastinating, like what are you struggling with and why? I really want you to, if you haven't already got a notebook out, do grab a notebook and start writing down all these bad habits or habits that you don't love and think that you need to fix. And then I also want you to try to figure out like why these things are happening. You know, take a best guess. Are you procrastinating on something because it's just something you don't enjoy to do? Or are you procrastinating because it just feels overwhelming? Definitely write those things down and also talk about why you can fix them, right? And how you can fix them. We, you, I'm not gonna go over all the little basic details because I think most of the time we know to not scroll so much, just don't scroll so much, to not procrastinate, get things done. But we, it, it gets a little bit more specific per person, right? So make sure you write down the basics. Then I want you to replace the bad habits with the good ones, right? I found <laughs> when I was cutting down my screen time on apps, I would get kind of bored. I had a lot of free time, which is crazy because I think of myself as a child. I wasn't on, you know, the smartphones weren't really like something that kids my age had when I was a kid. And uh, I had a lot of this free time. I think I filled that with video gaming and stuff like that. But anyways, that's <laughs> another story. But yeah, when you're not on your phone all the time, you actually have a lot of extra time. Even if you are working on skills and hobbies, there's only so long you usually spend on them. So I think it's good to talk about the bad habits and which ones you want to place them with. So less TV, you're going to replace that time with exercise. Simple things like I don't want to eat fast food anymore, you replace it with homemade food. Toxic relationships, you know, if you pour a lot into a relationship that just doesn't feel like it's very fulfilling, replace that with mentors or people who lift you up. Complaining, fill that with gratitude. You know, if you're talking to people a lot and you're always complaining about life, instead talk about like things about how thankful you are. Fill it with that instead. Overthinking, <laughs> that's something I am definitely guilty of. Take action instead of always overthinking. Kind of clock yourself when you're doing that and then blame responsibility. So instead of always blaming others when you're in like a bad situation or something, instead take responsibility and whether you're vocalizing that or talking about that, just replacing these habits with good ones. So those are some examples. Let's move on to routines and why you need them. So we hear about the benefits of routines a lot. So this shouldn't be a surprising slide. I've actually talked about building routines a lot on my channel as well. I'm really passionate about trying new routines and seeing what works for me. And I definitely go through different phases of what I prefer. So, you know, you have your routine examples, you, know, you got your morning, you have your night routine and daily routines. I think they're all really important to have, but let's talk about why routines lead to success, right? So the relationship, and this is from an article, which I will link in the description box. The relationship between a good morning routine and success is more than coincidental. It's causational. One study found that people with a morning routine earn 12 grand more each year than those without a morning routine, but there are other benefits besides financial gains. A morning routine leads to the following. Mental clarity, right? So you have more time to clear your head in the morning, declutter your thoughts, be more intentional with planning out your day. Consistency. I think consistency is so important in lots of aspects of life. By having a consistent morning routine, it's something that you can depend on throughout the week, right? So it creates reliable patterns. You learn to start each day with intention. You feel more disciplined and the foundation for growth and success in a lot of people's lives. Reduce stress. If you have more time in the morning and you're not frantically running around, you're not gonna make as many mistakes, right? Because you're not always rushed. You, got, you have time. So along with that, more energy. If you are getting into a consistent morning routine, you get used to waking up, you're gonna feel better in the morning. So you're gonna have more energy to bring to work or bring to your relationships or bring to life. So these daily habits can eliminate the need for excessive caffeine intake as well. And better time management. You have a more structured morning. It's not so chaotic, right? So you'll find yourself with more time on your hands. And many successful professionals rely on daily routines to help them accomplish tasks and maintain a satisfying personal life. You know, if you want to create a healthy balance between your professional and personal goals, you might want to create a daily routine alongside with like a morning and night routine to really help yourself get on track with everything that you need to do. So big routine fan. And 
you know, I haven't mentioned this at the beginning of the video, but we are only in March, guys. I know to me, I'm like, wow, the year is going by so fast, but we have lots of time left. So if you feel like you started the year on the wrong foot, you don't have a routine in place, you feel kind of all over the place, it is not too late to start. So as I mentioned, tomorrow's a new day. The sun rises, you get a new opportunity to start fresh. So uh, make sure to use tomorrow to get on track. Okay, talking about goals, right? Goals are super important. Hopefully you guys set some at the beginning of your week or at the beginning of the year, whenever you do your goal setting or at least have them in the back of your mind. I wanna ask you a question <laughs> because I fell into this trap a lot until very recently. Do you write down the same goals every single year? Cause I remember I was doing that for my new year's resolutions. Every single year it was the same goals, right? Some of them I still do write down <laughs> every single year and I have not achieved them, such as getting abs, not a six pack, just some simple apps. I've had that on my list every single year, have not achieved it. It actually cracks me up when I write it on my list every single year. I don't even know if I included it this year, but it's there. I still, I mean, who wouldn't want to have a pair of apps? Anyways, totally sidetracked, but I wanted to ask you if you write down the same goals every single year, because if you are, I know how disheartening it is because you know that you are not reaching your goals. You're not making any progress and that's, you know, it's tough, but I like to reframe it like this. Think of this when you get lazy, that you can't bear the thought of having the same goals next year. And that will help you. I mean, it's helped me motivate myself to get things done. So anyways, if you have your notepad out still, great. Let's write down what your goals are for lifestyle. What do you want your everyday life to look like ideally? Travel, where would you go if nothing held you back? Relationships, what kind of relationships do you crave? Work, what work gives you purpose and pays? You know, it's important. We need to be making money in this economy. Uh, characteristics, what traits do you wish to possess? And then also kind of think how can you possess them? You know, what things can you work on this year with yourself? So those are all important goals to have, to keep in the back of your mind, but also to keep in the front of your mind. Because I think even if you do this weekly or monthly, like a check-in with your goals, Goals. make sure you're not forgetting them because again you don't want to reach the end of the year and write down the same goals next year having felt like you haven't ac accomplished any of them so that's one thing I wanted to note as well and I just wanted to remind everyone that at any age you can write a book a blog a newsletter you can start a business a charity a YouTube channel you can play a new instrument or a sport and you can create a new you so don't use age as an excuse I think thanks to the internet it really does level the playing field with a lot of things a lot more things are possible than you would realize so don't use excuses to not get started on things talking to myself there too all right let's talk about planning so I love a good plan I really think creating an action plan can significantly improve your life. So first you wanna define specific action steps. So take each goal you've set and break it down into specific actionable steps. So for example, if your goal is to exercise three times a week, your action steps should include researching the type of exercises you wanna do, creating a workout schedule for each week, setting reminders or alarms to prompt those sessions, and then four, finding a workout buddy or accountability partner if you can. And then you wanna make sure that each action step is clear and achievable within a reasonable time frame. It's also important. Second you want to set priorities, right? So we only have so much time in the day. So evaluate the importance and urgency of each action step. Which one's most important to you? Which one do you want to put the most focus on? Really make that clear to yourself as well. And then you also want to consider which actions will have the most significant impact on your overall progress. That will help you prioritize them, right? So focus on completing those tasks first to build momentum. And then you also want to break down the larger tasks into smaller tasks to make them more manageable and less overwhelming. I think that's really key. That's helped me a lot as well. Okay. Third, you want to schedule and allocate your resources. So create a timeline or schedule for completing each action step and then allocate specific time blocks into your calendar dedicated to working on these tasks. I love using Notion or Google Calendar, but you can literally just put in each day like which time block you want to dedicate towards a specific thing. And I think that'll really help keep you on track. You also want to consider the resources you'll need to accomplish each action step, such as time, energy, perhaps money, if you want to take up like a new hobby, things like that. Of course, there are some limitations on things like that which I understand so really you know figure out where to allocate those resources and then be realistic about your you know availability and limitations <laughs> you know adjust your schedule and resource allocations as much as you need to ensure that you can consistently follow through on your plans because you just at the end of the day want to make sure that you're actually following through and then you want to monitor 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 why does this sound so funny this should say number four for adjust <laughs> monitor progress and adjust why do i feel like i'm saying monitor weird i'm gonna play this back in 100 percent i am saying it weird anyways you guys know what i mean it's on the screen um regularly track your progress towards completing each action step this is also really important you know if you're keeping a journal or a task management app or some kind of reminders to stay on track maybe you are tracking your you know habits things like that you want to make sure that you're 
checking in on any challenges or obstacles that are blocking you from getting these things done and then be flexible and willing to adjust your plans based on how it's been going, right? Like if you've set too big of goals and you're not reaching them, take note of this, go back to the drawing board and figure out how to break it down so that you can get it done. And then you also want to celebrate small victories and milestones as you progress through your action plan. One of my very good friends, she actually will like buy maybe like a chocolate bar or a special bottle of wine or something that she saves for when she's completed a big goal, which I think is awesome because then when you have completed that big goal, you have this thing that you're looking forward to enjoying and you enjoy it and you like celebrate yourself and reaching that goal. So I think things like that are really important. So by following these four steps, you can create a detailed and effective action plan to really just turn your goals into tangible results. So remember to stay focused, flexible, and committed to taking consistent action towards those desired goals. All right. I wanted to talk a little bit about channeling your emotions because <laughs> I feel like this is a really important part with improving your life as well, right? Like learn to channel your emotions using healthy outlets. So for example, if you were quite an angry person, perhaps exercise or cardio workouts are really good for channeling that emotion. You know, you're putting it towards a really cool goal because you're going to be in better shape and you're putting it towards that. If you're anxious, this is something that I like is to take walks in nature, no headphones, observe everything, be more mindful. Um, I think by focusing on little things, you can kind of like get your brain to just really relax. Jealousy, if you're someone who's quite jealous, I think you should, you know, find ways to focus on yourself more. What makes you unique? Focus on building your own self up without looking at others and comparing to them. So compared to yourself, where you were like a couple months ago to where you are now, that's what you should be comparing to, to help, you know, improve. Uh, if you're irritated or, you know, like stressed, I think it helps to widen your perspective by taking a step back on everything, take a little break. These are just some healthy examples of channeling your emotions. And I think, you know, the better we get at these, the more you learn as you go. Okay. This step is one of the most important steps, which is to execute on the plan, right? So 92% of people who set goals, they fail to reach those goals, which is really sad actually. And I think that's like a big statistic for people when they have new year's resolutions. A lot of people like dream up these big ideas, but then they fail to execute them and they don't, you know, follow through with them. So unfortunately setting goals is just like a step in the journey, but following through and achieving them is really the hardest part. So, you know, we're on slide 15 out of 20 and we're at the hardest part. <laughs> That's why I think this step could arguably be like the most important one in this entire process. So actions needed, you know, take these actions when, these are just some examples of actions to take. You're tired, maybe turn your phone off and go to sleep. You're uninspired, take a shower or a walk. You have self-doubt, journal, write and allow a stream of consciousness to end up on the pages. You're feeling low, spend time outside, read a fiction book, see a friend. We could really just keep sitting in our bad habits, right? But I think when you recognize them, you have to be taking action to make these changes. So take note when you're feeling certain ways, take notes when you're doing, you know, bad habits that you want to change and actually follow through with an action to change them. This is a step that I think is kind of interesting. I don't know if everyone will agree with, agree with me on this, but um, I think a really important part about leveling up or just living a nicer life is to be less reactive. And this is not easy. You don't need to be completely non-reactive, but just to not take things personally in life. I don't know what it is. Sometimes I feel like I live in Canada, so <laughs> I can speak from my own environment. We are so aware nowadays of feelings and I'm glad that we are because in the past, I don't think they were mentioned enough. But sometimes I feel like we talk about it so much that we struggle to not react because we, we put such an emphasis on feelings in this society. Again, not everyone will agree with me on this. I really like this quote, which is, the more we value things outside our control, the less control we have. You know, the best way to live a more peaceful, happier life is to become non-reactive, in my opinion. And it doesn't mean that you don't get to have strong opinions or have clear values and boundaries. It just means that defensiveness, it can come from insecurity, right? So if someone feels some type of way about you, unless they're bringing it up to you or it's impacting like work or things like that, try not to let it like matter too much to you, right? If you're taking things personally and getting defensive, you're kind of letting it show that your self-worth is low. Again, personal opinion. You can have strong opinions and understand that they might not be the same for someone else or true for someone else and it goes both ways. Just because someone else believes in something that you don't doesn't mean that you have to believe in it too, but it also doesn't mean you have to like shoot it down, right? So I think that like a strong, secure person we can hear someone else's opinion that we don't agree with and say, cool, like that's your belief, not necessarily true for me, but we don't have to agree, no big deal. And I think we're in a world where a lot of people with strong religious beliefs or political beliefs find this hard. And I don't know if it's because social media kind of reinforces our own beliefs, but just imagine how the world would look if we all incorporated 
more of this non-reactive behavior into our lives, right? So again, you can share your opinions, just not to like react so much and take things as personally. So that's just my point of view anyways. Thought I'd throw that in there. So the details count when becoming a more confident, successful person, right? And I am Canadian, as I mentioned, I'm big on saying sorry when it counts. I say sorry too much. And I think the slide might especially hit home for some of the girlies out there, especially in like the corporate world or like a male dominated environment. Like maybe you say sorry a lot or you've been told that you're like super nice. <laughs> like, have you ever been told that you're too nice? Because I, I have heard that a lot in my life and I'm still working on this. But I think when you're in like a work environment or anything like that, of course you want to be a decent, respectable person to interact with, but don't make yourself feel small. And I think by saying sorry for unnecessary things all the time can make you feel or like appear a bit smaller. So I think it's really important to start practicing with like simple phrases. I have some examples here with like replacing sorry with thank you. If you're a little bit late, instead of saying sorry I'm late, say thank you for waiting. If you've forgotten something, instead of saying sorry I forgot, you could say thank you for reminding me. Or if you missed something, you could say instead of sorry I missed that, could you repeat that? Thanks. So these are some examples, but you want to showcase more confidence again. So more respect less niceness. Not that being nice is a bad thing, but sometimes it can help in the workplace to just feel a bit more confident. Okay, so just an FYI at the end, you will never feel ready to do the things that scare you, right? So you're never gonna feel ready to jump off a cliff, to skydive, to do something that really scares you, like start a new business, to learn a new skill. You'll never feel ready to take that leap. And the reason is actually based on science and research. So your brain is actually designed to protect you and change always requires risk. So you're actually protecting yourself by saying, I'll start tomorrow. But there is a way to get around this. Um, I got this from Mel Robbins actually. It was like a little interview she did where she talked about using the five second rule to push yourself to take action. So when something is freaking you out and you're a bit scared to start, just say five, four, three, two, one, and just start. So that is one last tip that I wanted to share today. So again, don't hesitate, go out and get started today. It doesn't even have to be tomorrow, it could be right now. Um, but I really hope that this PowerPoint slide deck, as chaotic as it was, it wasn't perfect. Uh, was a little bit helpful in just helping motivate you and hopefully provide some small tips here and there with how to get your life back on track or more on track. Um, but that's all I have for today and I will see you guys all in the next video very, very soon. Bye friends.